Hey guys, it's Neon. We're going to talk about DC Comics. Yeah, I haven't talked about the mainstream comic book industry in a little while. It's something we used to talk a little more about here on Clownfish TV, but there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about other than it's uh, it's not doing so hot, right? So DC Comics is going to reboot its universe yet again, and I have to wonder, I have to wonder if this has something to do with the possibility of maybe DC Comics uh, ending it all ending its comic book publishing uh, business uh, as Warner Media, Warner Media, who is cash strapped right now as they look for ways to cut corners. We're going to talk about that. But uh, yeah, this kind of reminds me of uh, the article from from uh, earlier in the year where Forbes was even like, you know, DC Comics might not fit into AT&T's vision for Warner Media. We talked about all the budget cuts and then they announced this, that they're gonna replace all their main superheroes with new versions. Uh, new versions. Uh, you know, Marvel did this and it did not, did not work. Remember Marvel now? Remember how it kind of led to uh, Marvel sort of uh, crashing and burning with fans and retailers a year or two ago? And they had to kind of do a course correction and and bring all the old guys back. Yeah, that that didn't didn't work out very well uh, for them. I don't think it's going to work out very well for DC. But who knows? This might be a last ditch effort to uh, justify their existence to Warner Media. Uh, I have no idea. But we're going to talk about it. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. Uh, believe it or not, we do talk about more than Disney, even though it's been a very Disney month. But we're going to talk about comic books. So this came out a couple of days ago, and I really didn't pay much attention to it because I just saw 5G and I kept thinking to myself, what are they talking about, like a new app, or what the hell are they talking about? No, DC Comics is rumored to replace all their main superheroes with new versions. Pretty much all at once. Uh, not a good idea, in my honest opinion. Again, going back to Marvel now, they tried that. It didn't work out very well. They had to backpedal a year or two ago and uh, try to undo some of the damage, but they'd already lost a bunch of readers. Uh, they had uh, retailers kind of up in arms about it, and Marvel is still trying to undo the damage, and I don't think DC is going to gonna fare much better, especially since DC, they seem to reboot their universe more than anybody else. Uh, it, it used to be like once every couple of decades because it made sense to do that, but now it's like every freaking five years they're rebooting the universe, right? So this is coming from comicbook.com. DC will reportedly launch a publishing initiative in the coming year that will see many of its classic heroes replaced by next-gen successors, according to a report at Bleeding Cool. The initiative called 5G. 5G is something that several geek news outlets have been hearing rumbles about for months. Bleeding Cool has written about more than once, and the beat suggests that they had been tracking the rumors as well. Here at comicbook.com, we had heard about elements of this during the summer. The idea seemingly relates to the DC Universe timeline unveiled at New York Comic Con last week. The 5G is almost certainly a reference to a fifth generation of DC heroes. The first being a Wonder Woman carried through the Golden Age. The second will start with Superman and encompass many of the Silver Age heroes. The third generation would be from Crisis on Infinite Earths until Flashpoint. Fourth is the current crop of books post New 52. And the fifth, it seems that most of DC's heroes will cede their roles to younger heroes. I do not think doing this all at once, if this is not a, a uh, stunt, it probably is a stunt, I don't think it's going to go well. Bleeding Cool also suggests that Luke Fox will take over as Batman rather than a more seemingly obvious candidate like one of the Robins or Nightwing. Other characters like Jonathan Kent, Superman's son, and the Superboy of Brian Michael Bendis' Legion of Superheroes title, and Cassie uh, Sandsmark, Wonder Girl, and Young Justice seem like obvious choices. As we said about obvious ones above, that doesn't, tat doesn't mean much. Tat doesn't mean much. The beat follows up on Bleeding Cool reports that the 5G idea will be precipitated will be precipitated by crisis style events of course of course it will because we do them like every other freaking year don't we uh for a sales boost and that there will be some kind of explanation put in place as to why some of the longer running dc characters have been able to seemingly stay young for decades i don't know why is charlie brown still eight years old um why was he eight years old for 50 years why is bart simpson uh, was he in the fourth grade 
Why has he been in the fourth grade for freaking 30 years? Uh, you don't really have to explain it. I don't think you have to explain it. This all feels a bit like the 90s. Yeah, it does. When DC replaced Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and Green Lantern, among others, with young, new versions. Of course, especially with the first rumor change being a person of color, fans will compare it to the Marvel Now initiative. Yep from a few years back, which introduced a group of younger and more diverse heroes into the Marvel canon. Once the classic heroes were back in place, many of those new characters have established themselves as key players in the Marvel Universe. They had to backpedal. I don't know if that was the long-term plan or not. They just wanted to introduce all these new characters, but there were better ways to do it. It hurt the sales. It hurt their credibility with readers. Uh, and they're still, they're still trying to recover from that. It was not a smart move. Uh, such a move helps sidestep a key problem with the comics market that many readers will not try a new unproven property, but will buy books that have years of investment in, even if they don't like the books. <laughs> this, man, this is meant that it's hard for Marvel and DC to introduce entirely new characters. They haven't really tried, though, have they? They haven't really tried. And some fans who are critical of introducing a more diverse cast of characters in the superhero comics will claim that their real complaint isn't with the diversity itself as much as attaching new characters to existing brands. It's a real case of do what I say, not what I do, and of building a temporary story around replacement heroes and promising a return of the originals is the way to do it, then it's hard to criticize uh, that logic. No, it is, it's very easy to criticize that logic. Couple things. One, they absolutely could introduce, uh, they could introduce new characters. They could, but they don't because it's brand recognition. And they don't want to put the marketing dollars into these new characters. and uh, But it's almost like a, a backdoor pilot, isn't it? Like, oh, we're going to use uh, this character for you know Ironheart or whatever. So let's introduce her, have her take over uh, for Iron Man. And then, then we'll spin her off her in, into her own book. I mean, I guess I can kind of see the logic in that. But I'm like, wouldn't it make more sense to introduce the character in the main title? And then if there is a demand... If there is a legitimate demand for a standalone comic featuring that character, then you do it. That's what they used to do at Marvel with the Avengers and the X-Men. They had an ensemble cast, and if if you know one of the characters broke out, then they got a miniseries or full-blown series. But we didn't uh, we didn't just shoehorn characters in for the sake of of doing it. Um, I don't think this is going to go well, you know, and I, again, I haven't really kept up uh, all that much with mainstream comics over the last couple of years. Um, I've been reading more graphic novels, reading a lot more manga, but I can tell you this is not going to work. This is not going to work. They've tried it. They've tried it already. Uh, what are the comments? How about this? Why not release an entire book at once like Netflix? Stupid. Just plain stupid. I agree. They do something like this, meaning DC, I will never buy another comic book. Um, this will last a few months and then they'll go back. That's, that's, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, this is another sales gimmick. This is a sales gimmick. And this one might do them in because, you know, going back to the beginning of the video, uh, I was talking about, you know, this article that came out, uh, Forbes of the summer, talking about how Warner Media, and we've talked about Warner Media. Uh, extensively because they own Rooster Teeth, they own Crunchyroll. We've seen a lot of cutbacks at Warner Media, and one of the major cutbacks uh, has been some of DC Comics uh, imprints. They shut down Vertigo, they shut down Mad Magazine, and some people have been speculating uh, beyond Forbes. Some YouTubers have been speculating too that you know Warner Media may decide that it doesn't make sense to publish comic books anymore. It doesn't make sense to publish comic books. Why publish uh, all these comic books with, uh, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, when most people are going to know them from the movies or the TV shows or animated series? Do you really need new comic books? Do you really need to be paying all these freelancers? Do you need to have the hassle of publishing these books that, you know, a lot of people aren't buying these days? Um, or would it make more sense to you know, uh, justify your existence. If you were DC comics, be like, Oh, well, but we are creating new characters. Uh, you got to give us another couple of years. We're going to create new characters, uh, Warner media that you can make movies out of that. You can make TV shows out of, we're going to make new stuff. So you can't pull the plug on DC comics because we're going to give you all these new stories that you can take to the bank that you can, uh, uh, create new characters out of. Um, so I don't know. There's definitely something going on and I, it just feels like, 
you know, armchair observation. It feels like DC Comics is kind of, this is like the last ditch effort, uh, I think, for DC. Because we, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of changes, a lot of changes very quickly. We're seeing, you know, uh, folks in charge of DC Comics admitting that the comic book market as it is right now is is broken, admitting that the old stuff sells better than the new stuff. And this is stuff that Warner Media is probably telling them. Like, you know, we don't need new comic books. People are going to buy Watchmen and, and Dark Knight forever. You know, we don't really need any new stuff. And this might be a way, just, again, just hypothetical, I'm just I'm just thinking out loud here, but this might be a way that they justify their existence for another couple of years. I don't know. Uh, we do know that Warner Media has been absolutely, absolutely brutal, and I don't think anything's off the table at this point. I mean, it's very possible that they could just be like, "Hey, DC Comics doesn't make sense. It's gone. Doesn't matter what kind of history it has. It's gone." And uh, you know, I just wouldn't put it past them. So some other stuff somewhat related to this, uh, somewhat related to this is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, they're they're doing it on the, uh, er, they're doing it in the Arrowverse, which is weird. I haven't been following the Arrowverse shows for several years now. I kind of checked out after, I think it was season three or four of Arrow, which I loved back in the day. Um, but I, I watched uh, through season four, and then I watched the first season or two of Legends of Tomorrow, and uh, you know some of Flash, and I had a couple episodes of Supergirl. I didn't really care for it, and I haven't watched Batwoman. Don't even ask me. Uh, I might get around to it just to see if it's as god awful as people have been saying. But the concept that they're going to attempt to do Crisis on Infinite Earths on on TV, I was like, what the hell? But then. They started talking about how they're basically going to take like every Warner Brothers movie and TV show version of, of the DC universe and, and roll it into this event. I mean, we've got Tom Welling from Smallville. Uh, we've got Brandon Ralph reprising uh, his role as Superman, which is going to be weird because he's still in Legends of Tomorrow, I think, isn't he? Um, and And they're even going to give a shout out to Michael Keaton. He's obviously not going to be in it. But they are going to have uh, a newspaper with Michael Keaton's Batman on it. So he does exist in one of these multiverses. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm not a huge fan of the Arrowverse, but I think that's a really cool thing. Uh, I don't know if this is like the end of the Arrowverse or what, that they're going to like blow everything up after this little house on the prairie style. I have no idea. But one person they're not getting back, and it's very unfortunate, is uh, Michael Rosenbaum, who played Lex Luthor in Smallville. And he was great. He was great. But the reason I'm bringing this up, well, one, it's interesting that they're doing Crisis on Infinite Earths on TV, and then they're also going to roll into doing this 5G event in the comics. You see kind of a parallel here? Like, it's almost like, are they going to reboot the TV universe too? I, I don't know. Um, but it's interesting that the reason he didn't come back as Lex Luthor was basically that Warner wasn't going to pay him enough to make it worth his time. Now, I don't know what he's doing now, I can't imagine he's doing much beyond the convention circuit. Uh, but uh, everybody's like, oh, he had all these reasons why he's not going to do it. It basically, um, it basically came down to money. He said he was very grateful to the fans. Um, he said, I can't tell you how much it means to me. I'll, I'll be straight up about this. Warner Brothers called my agent Friday afternoon when I was in Florida visiting my grandfather in a nursing home. Their offer, no script, no idea what I'm doing, no idea when I'm shooting, and basically no money. No money. The real kick in the ass. We have to know right now. My simple am answer was pass. I think you can understand why. I hope this answers all your questions. Uh, yeah, they basically said uh, yes or no. Do you want in? And uh, sorry, we're not giving you much money. So this is this is interesting uh, too. Now this article coming from Bounding in the Comics. I will I will leave these articles in the description as we uh, normally do. This situation reads like the other signs of chaos at CW and DC parent company. Warner Media. We've already gone through the revolving door of power at the top that led to the resignation of Diane Nelson, Jeff Johns, and Kevin uh, Sujahara. Some tension lingers between Nelson and Johns. Um, so Abrams, JJ Abrams was added to the roster. Elsewhere on the TV front, 
there was a cancellation of Swamp Thing and suspicions of trouble at DC Universe. Spending cuts from on high seem to be the issue, but Warner reps have yet to provide an official statement or thorough justification. I, yeah, I, I think that there's something going on here with the money. DC has been treated strangely by Warner Media's new owner, AT&T. More of a lifestyle brand in their eyes, the presence of DC at the hallowed ground of San Diego Comic-Con was greatly reduced this year. Some people are led to believe that the publisher will be sold to cut losses. I have to wonder. Um, I'm really starting to wonder. I mean, look, they shut down a lot of imprints. And, and this, this 5G, I think this might actually be uh, sort of a last-ditch effort to justify their existence. Kind of like Marvel Comics is trying to justify their existence right now, having that panel at, what was it, South by Southwest, being like, hey, uh, hey, comic books are needed to make all these movies. And the truth is, no, they're they're not. They're not anymore. They're already Hollywood's already hiring away the top writers, the top creators to, to create ideas wholesale. I mean, seriously, these companies could release superhero movies based on characters that never existed in the comic books. And uh, people would go see those movies not knowing any better. They wouldn't because the general public doesn't read comic books anymore. So going to keep an eye on this but i will tell you just my armchair opinion is another reboot it's too soon and replacing all the main characters at once is a freaking stupid idea hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.